being an IA and like being having that constant exposure to the OCHEM one and two material um, definitely helps. And it keeps me kind of like fresh on like the mechanisms and stuff and like things that I should be thinking about as far as like my research lab goes. But um, really, if anything, it really it really works the other way. Um, the things I learn in the research lab can really um, um, like supplement what I'm using, like what I'm teaching to them. So we were talking about your research a little bit, uh, the mm -hmm. Hundle group. Uh, how did being an IA kind of like help you get in there or, or like when you were in the lab, you know, how in what ways did being an IA kind of make you a more efficient, you know, student in the lab or how did it help? Um, hmm. You know, I don't think I'm sure that there are um, there are some there are some aspects of like being exposed to that Ochem like lab, like the teaching lab setting that has have translated well into like the research aspect um like for example just the other day on this on the reaction i finished running um the cleanup of it involved uh column chromatography and i was like i know how to do that that's okim one and so um but it was everything you do in the okim one and two laboratory is kind of like the idealized version of what you would actually be doing um and it was supposed to work perfectly and you know there's no like they don't really teach you like if something goes wrong like what could it have been you know and like how like what's the next step like how how did you go about fixing it um so i would say that the being an ia and like being having that constant exposure to the okim one and two material um definitely helps and it keeps me kind of like fresh on like the mechanisms and stuff and like things that i should be thinking about as far as like my research lab goes but um, really, if anything, it really it really works the other way. Um, the things I learn in the research lab can really um, mm -hmm. um, like supplement what I'm using, like what I'm teaching to them. Because um, I tell my kids all the time, like, yeah, so like this is how like you would do this, but like really like this is how it's done. Like you know, like really like you don't do like a distillation to get off a little bit of ethanol. Like you would just rotovap it. Um, just stuff like that. Kind of like common laboratory processes that, um, you know, I never learned them um, until I was in lab, like, you know, until I was in a research lab. Um, and I don't know, it was kind of like, um, I don't know what the word is, but it was kind of like a really hard time to learn all of those things when I was first starting out in the research lab. And I'm still learning. Like every time I do something new, it's like kind of a learning process, but I would have thought that the, you know, taking the labs and teaching the labs I would have been, you know, a little bit more prepared, like at least I kind of knew what was going on in the research lab, but um, it is really like a whole new environment. Um, the learning labs kind of teach you the chemistry. They don't teach you how to do like, you know, experiments and stuff. So um, it's a really good like experience being in a research lab, but um, I try to take what I learned from that and use it to, um, you know, kind of supplement what I'm teaching to my students um yeah it's definitely it's definitely like a two-way street though mm. that's very interesting that you say it kind of like helps the other way more uh, mm -hmm. helps you be a better ia uh, mm -hmm. being in research yeah that's, that's very interesting mm. uh, i'd find that interested if uh we had a lab or like a like an experiment uh you know that would be like we mess up an experiment on purpose mm -hmm. and then we like figure out like what mm -hmm. to do from there like because like you said you know normally all the experiments that we do in the like an okim lab or something like that like they work almost perfectly because again we like whoever makes them knows the outcome and know it's going to work but it'd be cool if like there was an experiment that we do where like we didn't supposed to add something and we did or we weren't supposed to put it at that temperature and we did and it's like mm -hmm. from there where do we go yeah that, that would be cool that would be cool um that is definitely a good like problem solving practice because because every time something doesn't really work out in my research lab, I don't like yet really have those tools to kind of be like, okay, like this is something I can do next. I normally I'll like go to our postdoc or I'll go to Dr. Hudnall and be like, hey, like this didn't work, what do I do? And they're like, well, do this. Like just kind of like common things. And like my pat like 
none of my reactions ever really worked the first couple times. And so the first, um, you know, like every now and then, like when I come up and I ask them, like, how, like, what do I do to fix this or whatever? It's always like similar kinds of things. And so I'm kind of learning, like what those common, like just what you like might do if, you know, something doesn't work, um, which is good. Like, I think that's something that should be taught. Um, and obviously it's, it'll be different, you know, in every lab setting organic versus, um, you know, inorganic. And my, my research is technically it's organometallic. So it's a little bit different. Um, and I'm not sure how much that translates to like a purely synthesis, like pure organic lab. Um, but it's definitely, definitely like learning that problem solving um, kind of aspect to chemistry is one of the most important parts, especially if you want to do chemistry, like if you want to research or do like industry, you need to know how to like, you know, take a result that you weren't expecting and, you know, fix it kind of. And so was your, was your time in, in Hudnall's lab or was joining Hudnall's lab your first research experience? Is that the first lab that you got into? Yeah, it was. Were you considering other labs or you just liked organic chemistry? So you want to try that one out? Um, yeah, I, I knew I wanted to start researching. Um, and uh, I, was, I really wasn't sure where I wanted to or like who I wanted to do it with. Um, so I knew I wanted to do organic um, and I knew Dr. Curran was an organic chemist. And so really the, he's more biochem um, mm -hmm. now. Like I went and I talked to him because I had him for the, for Oakham one and two lectures. Um, oh, okay. and so he knew me well and I would always go into his office. And so we had a pretty good like kind of relationship. So I, I went into his office uh, about halfway through that semester, that like junior year semester in the fall, I was like, hey, like, I want to start researching, but I don't know, like, the first thing about it, like, what do I, like, how do I start? What do I do? Like, who do I talk to? And he was like, okay, cool. Like, he was like, do you want to do organic? I was like, yeah. And he was like, so these are like the main, like, organic people on at Texas State. He was like, I would go through and like go to their, like, their website, read what they're doing, and like, um, just so you kind of get a sense of what it is that they do. And then like actually go in and talk to them as well, like about like their active projects and like if there is a spot for you and stuff like that. Um, so I went and I talked to, I went over Dr. Curran's research and I went back and kind of talked to him about the current stuff he's doing. It all seemed really interesting, but um, a little bit too like biochem for me. Um, and I still, ha I still haven't taken biochem like the lecture. So um, it's definitely something I need to learn. And I really considered being in his lab um but after i talked to so i talked to dr kornienko as well after reading some of his research and i just didn't really um didn't really see it like good fit for me in that lab um but once i talked to dr hudnall um all of his projects seemed really cool and really interesting um and so that kind of pushed me a little bit more towards hudnall than uh Kerwin. So, um, but we've had, uh, like just last year, we graduated a senior who was in Hudnall's lab and Kerwin's lab. So he was kind of like double dipping in a sense, but um, he was doing like total synthesis in both the labs. So um, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely, I've considered, you know, kind of switching and a lot of people kind of, you know, move around in undergrad research at least. Um, but I really like the project I'm on right now. and. Uh, I kind of want to devote like a lot more time to it um, than I like already am. So I think like, you know, adding on another research like lab or switching research labs isn't really what I want to do right now. But um, I think it would be good um, to kind of get, you know, a different setting, like a new kind of experience and have to learn a new lab. Because um, that's what grad school is going to be, you know. Uh, but I just really like the project I'm on right now and I want to see it, you know, make some progress. Um, but yeah, that, that was my first research, uh, kind of like experience as Hudnall's lab. Um, but I've definitely considered like looking at other places as well. It, that's interesting. You mentioned like possibly going to Kerwin's lab or another lab. Cause I know I was talking to, to Jake Hermanson, who's been on the podcast before and, uh, he's in, he's in Kerwin's lab right now. And, and, uh, he was, you know, briefly mentioning he might try and go into, uh, Dr. Peterson's lab, another biochemistry professor, and, um, you know, do a little bit of work over there too. 
I never really considered that being a thing that you could kind of like go in between other groups and, and work on different projects. I'd assume that'd be a lot of work. And I think that's what Jake was saying was the only thing that was keeping him from like doing it right now was just that it, it would be a lot more work, but a ton more experience I, I'd assume uh, and probably more fun if you, if you enjoy it. So that's, that's interesting. You mentioned that too. Maybe it's more common than, than I was expecting. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we definitely, it's a pretty common thing, especially in undergrad to kind of, you know, survey all your options kind of a thing. Like several of my friends that are in research, um, the place that they are now was not where they started. Mm -hmm. uh, and I probably would have switched um, if I didn't like my project so much. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so if you want, you could briefly talk about your project, just like what it is you've been working on so far and, and why you want to like stick it out. Mm -hmm. Why you like it so much? Um, so it's this really cool. It's it's one of the only. So we do organo metallic stuff. So it's a lot of metals. It's a lot of air free chemistry. Um, so this this kind of this project is kind of more towards the organo side. There's a boron in there, which is like a metalloid, but that's kind of the closest you get to a metal for this project. Um, but it's a really cool. Um, so basically what it is, is you build this structure that's like a kind of like a carrier molecule, like a taxi molecule kind of a thing. Um, and there's two open, uh, like there's two reactive sites on this, uh, on this molecule. And we're looking at like the one on the back end of the, of this like taxi molecule. And basically what we're looking to do is um, complex a, uh, chemotherapy drug to this like taxi molecule. And in the complex state, the drug is not active. Um, but the that bond between the, mm. the drug and the taxi molecule is relatively weak. Um, it's weak enough to where if you give it um, energy just from like near infrared light, so pretty like low energy light, that bond will cleave. And then you'll get, you know, your activated drug, which is just in its drug state. And then the taxi molecule by itself is like inert. It doesn't really do anything. Um, so you would, in theory, like, you know, administer this, you know, complex form of this molecule to a cancer patient. And then only where they're like, where they have the tumors, you can shine, um, like near infrared light, which has like decent, um, skin penetration, but it's low in phototoxicity. So it's not like UV light that like also causes cancer. Um, since it's a lower energy, you can shine IR light and it'll break those bonds like only where there is the tumor um and then you get the drug activating only there instead of you know pumping chemo straight into your your bloodstream and you you know you lose your hair you like you know everything all over your body is getting like attacked it's just the cancer cells so it's like a targeted chemotherapy approach um and it's just really cool chemistry like i really like the i really like the kind of like the overall like end goal but it's really cool chemistry like every step of the way Mm -hmm. It kind of sounds like uh, like a spaceship, basically uh, launching into like space where like there's like a like the rockets are attached, and so it's like at some point it just detaches and then it goes. Oh, right. so it kind of sounds like that. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's a really cool project. I really like it. Um, if only it would work. <laughs> right, I, you can really <laughs> get kind of error. you can really get kind of focused on the like the end goal and like you know, in theory, this is what it's supposed to do and all that. But like, it, you also kind of have to enjoy the process, right? And like you said, it's fun chemistry, you enjoy doing the procedures and stuff. I think that's something important that you have to enjoy too. Because I mean, some of these things might take several years to eventually turn out the way we want them to maybe by the like, after we were gone, maybe that'll the project will be finished. So you, you do also have to consider just enjoying what it is you'll be doing. Mm -hmm. um, but very cool. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Have you yeah. done any presenting have you presented your research um, just in like kind of group uh we have like weekly group meetings mm -hmm. um and i've kind of presented like very very crappy data <laughs> um <laughs> just to like my other lab mates um because i haven't done anything like formal really um but i was talking with our postdoc and he said that you really need to get comfortable like being able to present and talk about your research because that's a lot of what grad school is. You have the weekly like group meetings where you'll present um, maybe like twice or three times in a semester. 
um, you know, in the other weeks, the other people will present. And then you have to do like a whole department seminar. So like how we do it on, I think it's Mondays or maybe Fridays. Um, we'll have a guest come in and speak to the whole like chem and biochem department, like whoever shows up. It's mostly grad students and like faculty that go to those. But I've gone to a couple and it's really cool seeing them present their like their, you know, life's work type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so he said you got you have to be able to do that. And then um, at least once. And then there's another time that you do it um, as like part of your like qualifying exams to get into the PhD track and like out of the master's track. Um, and in that, like in that qualification round of, you know, presentation is where they like really like grill you like really hard, like mm -hmm. ask you the hard questions and stuff like that. Um, and so you kind of have to like be comfortable with your research and know, you know, a lot about it and know the kind of questions that can come up. Um, but, you know, eventually he said, you're going to find it's like, someone's going to ask you a question where you're just like, I don't know, like, I'll, but that's a good question. I'll look into it. Like I'll figure it out. Um, so I've only done like really informal kind of presentations, um, just talking like in the group meeting and then not somewhat like, like super informal where it's just kind of like this, where I just kind of, give an overview of what we're doing and um, kind of stuff like that just to my friends and to, you know, anyone who asks what it is that we do, like my family, stuff like that. Um, but no, I haven't really gotten in front of like a group of strangers and kind of really like with a slideshow, like, but I do like, I think it would be good to get some practice doing that. For sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, being able to communicate what you do is almost just as important, if not more important than what you do. Right. right. That's like where it goes into like translational uh medicine and translating mm -hmm. what you do in the lab to actually you know getting it into public health and so yeah it, it's a good point that you mentioned um so we can kind of move away from research a little bit you you are an ia uh you're a private tutor as well right and mm -hmm. you just started doing tutoring for chemcats as well you you seem to kind of like education if, mm -hmm. if i'm not wrong uh, is that something you kind of see yourself getting into in the future in your career? Um, that's a great question. I don't really, I've, I've put some thought into like kind of my end goal career. Like I know I want to do something chemistry related um, and probably something research related. Um, I, I don't really have any exposure to what like the industry mm -hmm. like field of it is like, but I have a feeling it's kind of like, you know, you have, something that works like a product that works and you kind of do it again and again um which is great um but i think i like the kind of like the discovery aspect of it and like you know the problem solving stuff like that um instead of just doing something that i know works um kind of like the okim one and two labs like you're just doing stuff that you know will work um so i probably won't be going into industry but um so that leaves research um and it's either private research with a company um or like academia so i've definitely it's definitely something i've considered um being a full like full-on tenured professor is like a really really hard thing to do um you have to be a pretty impressive like candidate even for like lower tier universities you have to be like kind of like cream of the crop type of type of person so um it really depends on how my graduate school works out if i get really good publications um that are like actually like um i don't know like effective or like influencing on like the chemical world because a lot of publications are just like this is something we did like this is what we found but it has no like implications on the rest of chemistry if i do something which is like you know it's definitely a pretty lofty like ideal but if i do something that is pretty um pretty significant in the chemical field like um i think that would really help me like you know towards that that job of like professorhood. Um, but I don't really know if that's really something I would want to do. Um, I mean, you get good funding through academia. Um, it would be kind of like, I would want to be researching, but like, I would also have to teach. Like, it's not like, um, like I do enjoy the whole like education aspect and I like passing on what I've learned, but um, that's definitely not like my number one passion. Um, it might change, you know, as I learn more and if I get like a really sure. good professor, yeah. but, um, yeah, I don't know. I could teach, but it wouldn't be like my main job. Kind of like, you know, like the coaches that they're, they're coaches, but they also like 
have to teach like health or something. It's like, they're really a coach, yeah. but they have to be a teacher. It's, it would be like that. It would be like, I really like do research, but I also teach like, you know, a gym Kim two section or something. Right. You know? That's kind of how I would see it. If I do go the academia route. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Have you started applying anywhere? Yeah, I've started my application at UT and at A&M. Um, I'm looking at like other Texas schools like U of H, um, Rice, and like Texas Tech, stuff like that. Um, and I've been looking at like some California schools. Okay. But um, UT is right now like my number one um, kind of goal. And then A&M if I don't get into UT. Well, good luck with that. Uh, so yeah. you, you, you're probably going to stay in uh, in Texas? You think yeah, hopefully. Um, it would be nice to go to UT because I just my parents live in Buda and I, mm -hmm. I live with them. So it's kind of like it's only like 15 minutes to San Marcos, yeah. and it would only be about like 15 or 20 minutes to campus at, at UT. So I could just you know live here rent free for grad school and undergrad. So it'd be really nice to kind of like you know pad the savings a little bit and not have to worry about you know moving to a whole new city and having to right you know, deal with all of that. And I know Austin and, you know, and the UT program is really, really good at um, organic chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, whereas at A&M, it, it's more so, they have a good organic program, but it's more so um, like, it's really well known for their inorganic. Uh, so I really want to go to UT. That's kind of like the goal. Yeah, well, best of luck. That's, that's great. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'll need so, it. <laughs> have you, have you like uh, ruled out have you ruled out like taking a gap year or anything uh, when going to grad school to do maybe an internship or something like that? Um, no, it's actually something I've like been pretty heavily considering, not necessarily a gap year, but um, so my minor is math and I could okay. double major in applied math. Um, it would take me only one more year. So I told my, I told Dr. Hudnall, um, you know, if I don't get into grad school, like, I, I feel like because really like I've only had a couple months of research experience like I joined last year in November but I had like I got like a month and then Christmas break and then like another month and then COVID and like right. all of the spring and all of the summer was the labs were closed I couldn't go in at all um so I've really and then I you know picked back up in August and I've tried to be in there as much as I could I just feel like I kind of got shorted a lot of time um that like other people well, I guess not other people, but like in previous years, like you can research over the summer and I wasn't really allowed that. Um, so I feel like I'm catching up. I feel like I'm still like, like really behind and I'm having to learn these things that I feel like I should already know. Um, so I told Dr. Hutton all that and that like, you know, I might consider like taking a fifth year um, and just get a second degree like in math. Um, and, you know, it would be good because I'm, I'm part of a club. Uh, I play Frisbee and you, you have five years of eligibility. And so, you know, we would get another year of being able to play. And, uh, you know, I have friends around San Marcos. Um, so it would be like it's definitely something that I'm not opposed to mm -hmm. um, just staying around another year, working more and researching more. Like That's really if I don't get into any grad schools, that's definitely something I'll, I'll consider. Um, and then, you know that next cycle, that next year, I think I'd be like a much stronger grad school candidate, you know? The way I see it is like perspective, like what's, what's one more year to like right. a, a decade plus long career, right? So that, that's cool too. And I, um, I know a lot of people end up having to consider like, oh, maybe I could take one more year. Um, you know, personally, I, I don't plan on it. Mm -hmm. But then again, making making plans these days more than like a month ahead is just not worth it anymore. <laughs> like, I don't really know what, you know, December entails, but, um, uh, yeah. So, um, best of luck with that. I, I saw, I was looking at your Frisbees like the last hour or so. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's a pretty cool decoration. Um, so we could kind of wrap it up here. I just wanted to ask, what your most like memorable time here at Texas State has been? Like what's something that you really appreciate about being at Texas State, uh, especially as a chemistry major? Um, something that you really enjoyed that you might have to reflect on now? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I think it's nice. Um, 
because Texas State is like a somewhat big university. It's not like the biggest, but um, we have a pretty small and pretty like close knit um, chemistry department. And all the faculty know each other really well. And they're all like really like personable people for the most part. Um, whereas I think at like bigger universities, um, it's kind of more of like, oh, it's just, you know, another undergrad, just got to get them in, get them out kind of a thing. But at Texas State, they really like build the relationship with the students. Um, if you put in, you know, your half of the deal, like you have to, you have to try to make those relationships happen, but they will. Um, like Dr. Kerwin and I are pretty, pretty tight. Um, I like, you know, I haven't had him in a class in you know, over two years, but, um, you know, I asked him for a letter of recommendation for grad school. Um, just cause he knows like the student I am and, you know, I always go in and talk to him about stuff. Um, and then Dr. Hudnall is like, you know, great. Um, you know, whenever I went and asked Dr. Kornienko about his research, I was in there for all of like three or four minutes. Um, it was very like, he kind of just gave me like a cut and dry, like, this is what we do. Like, this is what we're currently doing. Um, but when I went to Dr. Hudnall's lab or Dr. Hudnall's office asking him what, you know, he did, I was in there for like an hour and a half. Mm. So he like really like dove into everything and like he was really excited about his research and um, I think that's what got me like kind of excited about doing research is hearing all of these cool projects like you know um, stuff like that I don't know just the the faculty culture um, they're all like you can tell like they're all like really there to help you kind of a thing like um, and even like Dr. Ostogi like how he's always like you know putting in like new like work into like the Ochem labs um, you can just tell like everyone there really wants the students to like exceed like su succeed as much as they can um, and I don't know it's just a really good environment I hope it's like that you know in grad school wherever I end up going um, but that's probably one of my favorite things about Texas State like the chemistry department is just how it is kind of like a little family like <laughs> it's kind of cliche but like no, Dr. Yeah. Britton too is is Dr. Britton is great too like um, working in the stock room he's kind of always in and out and kind of doing like the the more like back end part of the, the department like the managerial side and like the office side and I get to see that you know through the stock room um, not so much like the chemistry side of it but um, it is it is cool to kind of see everyone kind of work as a team um, and like the common goal of just like teaching people mm -hmm. uh that's very well said. Um, yeah, that's I great. Gotta, I gotta say, that's probably one of my favorite things about Texas State, too. I know that's kind of what Jake said when he was on here. It's just, like, the more personable aspect of, you know, all, all the faculty and, and how how much they actually do want to listen to you and, and, and make sure that we're all successful. Uh, I, I've definitely found that to be one of my favorite things about Texas State, too. So I'm glad you agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that that's all I really got. Edgar, you got anything else? No, honestly, I I think it's uh anytime I get to speak to another chem major, uh, it's great because <laughs> I know uh there's not uh well I don't know how many of us are there, but I feel like every time I speak to either like a uh, someone in the STEM field, uh, they're more than likely not chem. So yeah. it's nice to hear right. the perspective from from a chem major, and um, I guess kind of like what I should be expecting in the near future too. Yeah, it was a good talk. Yeah, guys, I had a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks so much for being on here. Really appreciate it. Hope some students can really take away from being an IA and, you know, maybe might change their major to chemistry. Who knows? <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well,